do it live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a special edition, another special edition of the Cinematic Lounge. We're going to do a little Halloween treat uh, with Chris Coker, who's in the green room right now. We're not going to show the green room uh, until I put an elliptical machine in there and we can exercise while we're in there. Um, but Maria is not going to be on the, the show with us. I'm sorry, Maria. No, it's okay. Uh, just tell everybody what your the, your favorite horror movie was when you were a kid. You told me yesterday. My favorite? Favorite? Black and white vampire. Oh, so I my favorite is Nostradamus, Nostrad- the black and white silent version, because right. that's how my brother Bruce taught me how to read. Was watching silent movies and reading the little. Did you I guess like the, the movie. Were, I remember liking it and Phantom of the Opera. Okay. I mean, I could still tell you what they look well, like. We've got a there's a, a, a Nost, Nost, is it Nostra, Nostradamus. 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 Nostradamus is Thank the guy the who room. makes the I predictions. Knew, I, was like, yeah. I don't think it's yeah. Nostradamus. That's the guy that predicts the future, <laughs> okay. right? Yeah. Okay, not the vampire. Okay. Um, there's one coming out this year, and then Werner Herzog did one, I think, in the 80s or 90s, which is supposed to be pretty good, too. Right. Sorry. Okay. okay, but you still have to prepare a drink for us. Yes, so I what do. what do you bring to the table today? So today is a dark and stormy, because it was a dark and stormy night. That seems like a so nice Halloween theme. I thought that was a good Halloween theme. Okay. And um, it's ginger beer. And then dark rum. That's it? Yeah, there's a little lime in there for a little So the, what's the brown from the ginger beer? That's the dark rum. Oh. It's leaked down and the yeah. ice is melted. So. I like the separation though. Yeah. How does that do that? Yeah, well, you put the ginger beer in first. Yeah. And then you pour, lightly pour the rum on top and it just sits on top. Okay. But then when you drink it, you just get a mouthful of rum. So nice. that's why the stir nice stick hit. is here because As I'm going to stir I'm it before I drink it. I'm a big baby. I don't drink that stuff. <laughs> Um, all right, show that. Please point it. To, show it to the camera. Pick it up. Here we right go. Oh, it's nice. hidden behind the dark. Mask. And so, well, I got all this. I know. I'm trying to be spot on. Can you tell we're doing a Halloween? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. I can. All right. Well, are you going to leave that for Chris, or is he going to keep this I made Chris so one, one for me to take for all me. Right. Okay. Uh, Chris, you can come out. Of, thank you, Cheers. Maria. Appreciate Have it. Have a good one. Chris will come out of the green room now. Hey, hey, hey. hey! Oh, you got one? No, you take two. Take two. They're small. I have one over back oh, here. Okay. I always have a supply behind the behind the bar. No, I had to brew that up. Yeah, yeah, you whip that up here. Put it. Get it on the camera angle. We don't. Want, we don't want drinking. All right. Well, welcome. Hey, man. How's it going? It's going fine. So, yeah, I, I, you know, this is sort of uh, relaxed. Like we don't have any special plan. I, I know you said you're going to bring. You want to talk about a couple of. John well, Carpenter movies. Yeah, I mean, it's being Halloween, October, and all right, that rock, stuff. Yeah. Hor- horror movies are obviously on a lot of people's minds. And I'm not the biggest horror guy, but I will say I've – not every single one of them, but I've I've enjoyed a lot of John Carpenter's movies. And I think he's, he's known as a genre director, but also, as you have on there, Halloween being probably I mean. <laughs> one of the most – yeah, Michael Myers right. being one of his – Biggest, uh, biggest hits. Yeah, um, really put them on the map, etc. But I'm not going to talk about Halloween specifically. Okay. But um, mostly right. going to well, talk let me, about. Let me just explain what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about your films you want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, Halloween came out in '78, so you probably didn't see it on the first run. You must have picked. No, it up later. no, no. That was much later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's a couple of things I want to talk about your stuff, but then okay. I'm just gonna. I fell down a rabbit hole this this uh, week. Okay. Halloween week. Mm -hmm. And I've discovered a couple of old series that came out in the 80s. But there's one specifically that I was watching as a child in 1972. Series of films or series TV series? I'll I'll just, I'll spill the beans. I want to talk about a couple of night gallery segments that Uh, freaked me out as a kid. Okay, yeah. That when I saw it on YouTube, someone does a top 20. Mm -hmm. There's a nightmare I have or this scenario that I've known about my whole life. Now I know where it came from. And when I mention the story, everybody's going to go, oh, I remember that one. And Mm. I didn't realize that that's where it came from. Really? But it just popped back in my head. And there's another movie I want to talk about as a young, horny 13-year-old oh, yeah. with these cute women in it that I have no idea what the title is, but I'll describe it and see if maybe you can figure it out. Right. I can't figure it out. I have no <laughs> idea. But okay. anyway, let's start with your uh, John Carpenter uh, thing, sure. stuff you want to talk about. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, two of them, the two that, that, that came to mind and I just rewatched. I actually rewatched The Thing as well just okay. because they were just... 
every it, it feels like every October, all the streaming services they're all doing it now. You know, it's they, amazing. they they pump up. You get a whole bunch, and so John Carpenter just throw everything John Carpenter has up there, right? So I rewatched the thing, which is great, but that's more sci-fi horror. And I saw that as a little yeah, kid. That's, and that that's freaked body me out. horror. I mean, oh, that's that totally horror. freaked me right. out. It's great. It still has. Okay, to, again, that came out in eighty two. Yeah, to so this you, day, you wouldn't have seen it. As no, a no, kid. no. I saw okay. all these on video. So. To this day, the scene where the guy is doing CPR or not CPR, yeah. and he goes with the paddles, and his arms go inside the chest, and it bites off his hand. To this, and then the head rips off. Right. To this day, that's the classic. This day, it's I mean, that's one of the scariest. Most my favorite is when the yeah. head flips over uh-huh. and crawls out. And oh the yeah, guy the spider goes, legs, and the guy, the hip <laughs> with the pot yeah. guy, uh, the guy that was in thirty something. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, you've got to be. Kidding, kidding me <laughs> just like we were all thinking the same thing i know it's so it's great like you've got and you know remember alien had come out in 78 mm-hmm. so the chest burster thing was before the was thing. yes uh-huh and the thing was still huge i mean yeah the stuff it, that happened there okay yeah. so so you don't want to talk about the thing or you do no i don't okay because enough's I, been said about yeah, it. yeah yeah everybody knows that right. i actually want to talk about the fog okay with and Adrian Barbeau, that fall? Yeah, yes, yes. They, with Adrian Barbeau. And, um, Adrian not, Barbeubes, we used to call her. Oh, God. Understood. <laughs> uh, no yeah. Offense. She's great. I'm not. Uh, she was She's in the, terrific. She was in the She's, from New York. Yeah. Too. Oh, yeah. Right. She's married right. to John Carpenter. Yes. 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 She actually, they had an affair when he was with Deborah Hill. Like oh. they, he and Deborah Hill were together. Then they had an affair. Oh, nice. And, and then they got married. So. Freaking love Hollywood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but I also want to talk a little bit about. Christine, okay. the Stephen King book. I don't think book. I've ever seen that all the way through. The Stephen King book right. that later, you know, that John Carpenter made into a movie. Right. Um, those are two that, like, it, it's funny. I like both of those films um, to varying degrees, partially because neither of them are super gory, right? They're not, even though they're rated R. Yeah, Chris, yeah. They're not super gory. Uh, but I, I like them because they're, they have, and I've always preferred, like, creeping dread. Right. And, like creepy what's going to happen yeah. as opposed to just all maniac right. slashing body okay. high body counts never never really I mean, even halloween that. if you break halloween down oh yeah there's not a lot that goes on in no that, you know from from a from a visceral point of view or, yeah or and body. i have i have friends that literally like halloween 2 better than the original halloween and i look at them like they've got a third eye and I'm like, what are you that's talking the one about? In the hospital, right? Yeah, that's the one that literally takes place Directly like right after the like it's a direct two, uh, sequel. Yeah, to it's the, like yeah. two hours later or something right. crazy like that. And I always ask them, I'm like, what? Are you crazy? And they all and and these folks have all been like, he kills more people. Like there's a you know there's a group of horror folks out there. They like the high body count. Yeah. They like the unusual kills, the yeah. different way that Freddy or Jason or whomever. You know, takes out. Well, Friday the Thirteenth turned into yes. What are the kills going to be? I mean, yeah. Saw did it too, but yeah. Friday the Thirteenth kind of started it. Yeah, the sleeping bag mm-hmm. kills or the yeah, you know, all that through crazy, the wall through or the up walls. through the bunk bed. Right. But the thing I liked about the fog was is okay. That, but back to Christine. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Christine, Christine is mm-hmm. about the car that's yep. possessed, right? Or possesses the kid. I forget what the well. It's based on a Stephen King right. novel. And it's funny because I actually did watch a little behind the scenes on it. And basically it's about this kid who's kind of a really – Keith Gordon. Keith Gordon, pushed around, kind of dorky guy um, who sees this car. And it's like a Plymouth – it's like a 58 Plymouth Fury. It's a cherry car. I mean it's, it's – right? It's a well, nice – Well, not nice, at the beginning. It's a – Right. But he yeah. fixes it up. But he fixes it up and it's gorgeous. And it's interesting. King actually chose the Plymouth Fury. He said because at the time – it did not have any kind of preconceived notions for it. It wasn't a 57 Thunderbird. It wasn't one of these famous cars, but it kind of had that old timey car look, you know, that kind of fifties big fins on it, you know? Anyway, long story short is, and this is where the book and the movie differ a little bit. The movie kind of posits the idea that the car is evil, right? While the book, it's the owner, like apparently in the book, the owner keeps appearing to um, the main character. Okay, so the original owner of the car. Right, the not original Keith owner, Gordon. Not but, Keith okay. Gordon. Okay. And he's literally like riding shotgun while Keith Gordon's driving around, and he's this decayed body, right? He's like a decayed ghost or body. Um, and interestingly, the screenwriter, the guy who adapted the uh, the, the novel into the movie, he, he um, said uh, the year before they started making the film, as, as he was adapting it, he's like, American Werewolf in London came out. 
And then it has that whole bit where Griffin Dunn, he gets murdered and he keeps appearing right. to David Naughton as a slowly decaying right. corpse. And they were like, eh, it's kind of already been, it's already been done. Oh. And so they, they didn't even really like the idea because they liked the idea that the car was evil. I always liked the idea, though, that you know, guys love their cars. A lot of guys do. Some really, really do. And I always like the idea of a car that loved a kid back. Okay. And it does. And it does all this stuff. And it, it murders for it him. It protects him, right? Yeah. And it protects him. And it murders for him. Um, and there's just a couple of really great... I think the acting is really great in that that movie. Or it's good in that film. Um, and then there's just a couple of really amazing scenes like where Christine, completely engulfed in flame chases down like the worst of the worst bullies and, and runs this guy over and you, and it's not high speed. It's almost like it's coming. He's running and it's like, it's, it's like the car is enjoying it. And then it cuts to just the car. And then there's just like, obviously a dummy, but this body that's just been not only run over, but lit on fire. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, you know, I like, I just, I think it was a good movie and the, and the kid gets cooler you know, as the thing goes on, he's wearing better clothes. Does he know? I, I, like I said, I've never seen the movie. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen it all the way through. Does he know the car is killing for him, or is he oblivious to that? I don't know if he knows it's killing for Yes, I think he eventually figures it out. Because okay. there's actually a one scene in the film where there's a guy who owns this, like, um, junkyard slash garage where he is keeping Christine. And the guy's actually, he, the guy's like one of those... You know, he's always yelling and, and he's kind of has this rough attitude, but he's actually pretty nice to Keith Gordon's Ar Arnie is his okay. name. He's actually pretty nice to Arnie, lets him raid the junkyard to help fix up Christine. And I think what happens is after this flaming incident where the car is on fire, it rolls back into the garage and it's obviously mangled. And this old guy sees that the car's on fire. Um so the car is able to regenerate itself and everything. So he would know the secret. And so the guy gets into the car and then the car kind of crushes him. <laughs> right? Like with that's, now, it's crazy. Does but the, is there a mechanism that makes the car get possessed or is it just, does it, it just, just is it just like is. they show there's a great the kid scene. Find, the kid, does the kid buy the car? He buys and the he car. Wants to fix it up. Yeah. It's sitting. It's obviously been left decrepit okay. for a long time. He buys it from. So it just happens. Yeah. Okay. But well, the thing is, actually, the movie starts as the car is coming off the assembly line. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. A interesting little note. Also, backstory is that, um, uh, what do you call it? Carpenter and the cinematographer, the guy who uh, might have been Dean Cundy. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, actually, they used a different film stock. They used Fuji film. Which is kind of a softer, yeah, a little greener. It's not, yeah, you know, it's not warm. They used the Fuji film to shoot that because it was a flashback, and then they used regular Kodak film during the rest of it, which is much more high contrast and sharper. Right. So to kind of give it that soft, yeah, yeah, Kodak, yeah, exactly. Give it that soft look. But anyway, Christine is just kind of a fun movie. Um, I think it's got some pretty good performances in it. But is it is it actually scary? I mean, is it? Is um, it it's not scary like like terrifying like jump out and scare right. you no there's zero jump scares in that movie other than there's a couple of moments where like the headlights come on and you didn't realize christine yeah, but was the car kind of stalks people right a little bit yeah it's, little it's more of kind of a little, yeah like, very yeah. very okay. jaws like in that regard uh, yeah i'm just trying to see who um there's actually a great scene too where in the end as the car is getting mangled as it's smashing into things uh the grill looks like teeth yeah and they did that right. on purpose right. but i mean it's not super obvious you kind of it just kind of gives you the m morgan cinematographer oh i have no well, idea. you know i've seen some behind the scenes of this film and some of the cool stuff the practical things they were doing to have the car fix itself and, yes and you know i mean that was pretty yeah like is, what when did it come out do you, you know, like 82 I, I just, 83 <laughs> 83 maybe yeah so and i mean what they did was is like to make the car look like it was popping itself back out after yeah. being damaged, yeah. they literally just sucked it in, like put hydraulics on it to pull it in. Right, and just reverse And then it. put it in reverse. You're right, 1983. Yeah. So, uh, but Christine, I, I think Christine is a fun kind of not super gory. Yeah. You now, know. what do you think as a King adaption? Was it, uh, did it work or? Like, well, it... I've never read the book. Okay. So, so you know, you I think it, it adapted pretty well, yeah. you know? Um, What's funny too is I did see a little bit of uh, John Carpenter talking about it. Yeah, and he said he saw like a billboard when the movie was coming out, and he's I think this was the last movie where he he had his name in the title 
Like for a lot, it was John, John Carpenter's, Carpenter's Christine, yeah. John Carpenter's The Fog, yeah. John Carpenter's The Thing. Yeah. And he was just like, I saw my name up there like four times on the post. He was like, I got to stop doing that. Oh, wow. And so I think after that, it just became Starman or, yeah. you know, Escape from New York or whatever. Did you ever see his vampires with James Woods? I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. So the next one is The Fog. The Fog. Starring yeah. Adrian Barbeau. Starring Adrian Barbeau, yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Donald Pleasance. 1980. Yeah. Um, Hal Holbrook's in it. Yeah. And uh, actually, interesting note about Hal Holbrook. They literally had him for one day. Janet Lee is in it, yeah. actually. Mom of Jamie Lee Curtis, right. I might add. Right. Dean Cundy did The Fog. Maybe it was, okay, okay. Dean Cundy did The Fog. My bad. Yeah. So The Fog is basically, the story is, uh, it's a little town up in, Portland, Oregon, it's or near Oregon, or something. Yeah. Isn't it Maine? It's Maine. No, yeah. I think it's supposed to be the West Coast. Is it? I think oh, so. Man, you might be right. You might be right. Because it's it's celebrating its hundredth anniversary in like nineteen eighty. Okay. So it's like it seems like that's pretty new for a main an old yeah, main that's town. A good point. Good you point. know? I mean I guess we could read the And read they do the, mention the, Bottega the, Bay. Okay. Which actually, it's funny. They actually some of the distance shots are of Bodega Bay from the birds. Yeah. Um, but that's basically an, the story. An unearthly fog rolls into a small coastal mm. town exactly 100 years after a ship mysteriously sank in its waters. Okay. Right. So basically, what happens is the story is the town story that they tell for the townspeople. They're celebrating their centennial. Is that hey, there was this terrible shipwreck, right? But there was gold on board. And even though it was a terrible tragedy, the town fathers were able to use the gold to to found the town and do good things with it, right? For Out of the tragedy came something great. When what we find out later is that in actuality, those six members, the town fathers, whatever you want to call them, they actually purposely set a bonfire to draw in this ship, which was full of lepers, apparently. One of whom was very rich, and they because they didn't want a leper Full colony. Of lepers, not lepers. leopards, lepers, not leopards. No, but they lepers. were trying to get the gold. Is what they were trying yes. to steal from the ship. Yeah, the lepers wanted to set up a colony like a mile or two away, have their own little leper colony, and uh, they didn't want that. And they knew one of the guys was really wealthy, so they actually set a fire to uh, to purposely have them wreck the ship. Okay. So now it's a hundred years later and the fog shows up and through some weird stuff, you find out that the fog needs to kill six people because there were six town fathers. Um, and Adrian Barbeau is a DJ, right? She's a DJ with a son, right? right? And so she's kind of, so it's just, it's kind of weird. It's kind of creepy. Once again, more like the creeping dread, not a lot of blood. Yeah. Um, but they're like zombies coming out of the fog, right? If I remember, aren't they like? Yeah, well, they're lepers. Um, I mean, they were lepers a hundred years ago, but yeah. now they're. I they mean, look. Would you call them zombies at this point? Well, I, I, they're, the Walking they're, Dead, or I don't know if I go so far as to call them the Walking Dead, and more like spiritual. Okay, so they're like ghosts. They're, they're more really, ghosts okay. than anything, okay. yeah. Okay. But they are physical; like they can't walk through walls because they're like pounding on doors and stuff. Okay, so they do have physical yeah, so agency. Zombies. Yeah, and I have to admit, with the fog, it's one of those movies where. As much as I enjoy it, I feel like it could have been better. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, that's like, right. No, but I mean, like, there are some parts where you're like, okay, that's not really that scary, you yeah. know? It's Things like that. But it does definitely have a creepy vi- – and I feel like they could have used the, the creepiness of fog yeah. and not being able to see 10 or 15 feet away from you a little bit more. Yeah. I think they could have ratcheted now, up have the you tension. Seen the remake? No, the remake literally has – because I looked it up – and you know how sometimes when you look something up, it'll tell you like it's. And don't get me wrong, I don't, I don't like swear by Rotten Tomatoes or anything like that. But it literally had like a four percent critic score and like a twelve percent um, audience score. The new one. The new yeah, one. Yeah, because it sucked. Yeah, I didn't. But see I haven't it. seen it. Wait, I gotta remember. I gotta put my. You know, I have my lounge glasses, and I always forget to put them on. Change my persona. You know, this is like I got, I got, <laughs> I got a thing. I got a thing. People, they want this. Nobody wants it, but. I want. I think it looks good, man. Yeah, me I think too. it's cool. Uh, but I would say, if like, I remember she was wearing funky glasses. You know, 1980, they're mm-hmm. probably huge. So, what was Jamie Lee Curtis? Was she? She was literally just a hitchhiker that some random guy who I, who kind of looks like a like a poor man's Powers Booth or something okay. like that picks her up and picks her up, up the and they end up hooking up. And she just starts hanging out with him, even though all this really weird 
stuff starts happening and all takes place over the course of a day yeah and um like i said did, it, did they get the six they they did they eventually do um but one of the great the great one of the great bits is donald pleasance because it's a john carpenter movie so donald pleasant shows up he's great by the in way. the opening scene and he's telling this ghost story of like this ghost story at the beginning of the of, of the movie and it's yeah. about the fog and everything and um it's great like he is great in it it's it's you know it's one of those movies like if you don't like a lot of um i would say both of these films fit into the category of scary creepy but not gory and gross yeah not gross like i mean don't get me wrong people get meat hooked in this movie <laughs> But like, there's not gouts of yeah. blood or anything like that. I just it's, saw a review uh, for Terrifier Three. Which oh is yeah, that yeah, weird. yeah. There's yeah. Terrifier One, Terrifier Two, Terrifier Three, and, yeah. the, and the guy was saying, "Okay, it's just so much blood you can't even right. You know, it's it's and it's it's almost comedy. Yeah, how much blood comes out of people. So I mean, but again, the 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 fog definitely is creeping mm. dread. Right. Yeah. I don't yeah. think those things ran. They just, no, you know, no, you they just get caught because you're in the middle of the fog. And yeah, the fog just going. kind of Christine again creeping. Now these yeah. are all these are both movies that you were an adult when you saw them, right? Teenager, t nineteen eighty. What year were you born? I was born in the early seventies. Just say that. Why can't you say the date? I don't know. So we could be trying to dox me. I'm kidding. Nineteen seventy three. Nineteen seventy three. So in nineteen eighty, you were okay. So you were what? So you like know. I was like seven in nineteen eighty. So I probably saw these you, movies you when I was like movie. 14, 15, okay. 16. Okay. On yeah. VHS. Or VHS. Something. You didn't go to the movies to see no, the movies. No, okay. no, I didn't go to the Is movies. Is there a film or something on TV mm-hmm. when you were growing up as a little boy mm-hmm. that freaked you out? What like like did they I grew up in Massachusetts, so we had Yeah. Channel fifty six, channel thirty eight had these weird movies that would play late at night. Did right. you right. have that here? Yeah, we had Creature have, Feature. Okay. Yeah, we had Did Creature Feature. Was there anything you watched when you were a child that that Yeah, there were some that actually um I'm gonna I was really young and um we actually had a guy out of DC. His name was Count Gore Duvall. Gore Duvall. Yeah. Like he was like one of those guys where he had his own show. It was right. Creature Feature. Right. It was a locally produced thing when, you know, it was all ooh, yeah. you know, whatever. And he would do creature feature. Um, but I remember what actually one that really scared me because I was little when yeah. I saw this. I, I was probably I seven or eight. Yeah, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, really? That's because a creepy film. When you watch that, when you now, sit down and you actually watch it, it's a really when that creepy. That thing is swimming under her. I know. <laughs> and the funny thing about it was, and I'm not making this up, man. Channel Channel 20, WDCA 20, right. out of DC. Okay. Yeah, they ran a promotion with 7-Eleven. They showed it in 3D, and if you went and bought a Slurpee, you could buy 3D glasses for like 50 cents. And it was big. Like I just remember everybody I knew was like, did you watch it in 3D? And on all TV? This, on TV. Uh, the it's 3D, a black and white film. How do they And it wasn't very- How well, do they black pull and white, that off? Black and white used to be- It was a 3D movie yeah, originally. It was? I think so. It was? I just remember this. The 3D wasn't that 3D. And the only time I really remember the 3D being, there's a scene where like one of the frog, not the creature, but one of the frogmen has like a, um, like a shock pole and he's pointing it right at the camera. And I remember thinking, wow, that came out. Probably like better than Jaws 3. They try to. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So the the creature Creature from the Black Black Lagoon was one. Um, But then again, you know, I mean, I, I did see the thing when I was really young. Like I wasn't even, I was probably. But again, on VHS Ten, or something. On VHS, okay. yeah. So I saw like I mean, the that's how, you know, the Evil Dead. That's how the Evil yeah. Dead spread. Yeah. That wasn't, nobody watched that in a movie theater. That was a VHS yeah. that some kid would have mm-hmm. and would say, hey, come to my house. I got to show you this this thing called Evil Dead. And then it just blew up from there. I do remember seeing the faces of death. You oh, remember those seen it. bullshit? Yeah, I remember those. I'm sorry. B- BS. I say that. Those BS documentaries right. but as a kid you were like oh it's real right. a guy got eaten by an alligator yeah. and and i'm like it didn't dawn on me that they had like three different angles you know well i didn't i you know those they're, they're all there's some doc that came out recently those guys in um, asia somewhere that were murderers that that, that was legit like oh wow watching stuff happen um all right so what's the third john carpenter that you wanted you said the fog the thing I'm sorry, Christine, Christine the Fog. Uh, What's the third? Well, the thing. I okay, rewatched okay. the thing too because okay. it was like. It have was you like, seen the thing 2011 thing? I have actually. What do you think of that thing? Well, it's funny actually. 
um, I, in a weird way, I think they actually made that. I was like the perfect guy to see that movie um, because I had seen The Thing back in the 80s or, you know, whatever, a couple, maybe once or twice in the 90s. But I wasn't like a huge, I didn't remember all of it. So I went to go see The Thing in 2011 thinking it was a remake. Right. Not realizing until about two thirds of the way through that, oh no, this was actually prequel. a prequel. In fact, it may have been at the very end when the dog is running and then it hits me. I'm like, oh my God, you know? So I'm like that rare guy that, that didn't that remembers the thing well enough to remember it and everything, but also wasn't so well versed in it that I remember all of the like yeah the, the nods the axe yeah. in the door the axe in the, the door the, the weird I, mean, I, yeah. I I was that guy yeah okay so you like the moment you're watching you're like oh, oh this yeah, is just I knew yeah. I knew because I read about it, I knew oh, yeah. the, the only thing that bummed me out was because I didn't hate that movie I thought it was pretty good but they made a decision to get away from the practical effects yeah. And and use the uh, CGI CGI stuff. CGI stuff, yeah. And you can see the mix in the film between the two. Mm-hmm. And when they go to the CGI stuff, it's like, oh, they yeah, they could have just it could have worked as it was if they had just left it alone. Sure. Um, I did like, and again, I was all the call outs that happened. I was, you know, the, you know, I was into that. I didn't hate it. Oh, I, I did think of another movie that freaked me out as a kid. Because once again, so here's the thing is my brother was five years older than me. <laughs> so when I'm 11, he's 16, right? right? So he's bringing back more horror right. stuff. Yeah. Um, and I mentioned it before, and I love this movie dearly. Uh, An American Werewolf in London. Oh, such a good film. Yeah, and especially and that the- that is a brutal film. Yeah, it's super bloody. Yeah. And the dream within a dream was the thing that freaked me out the, the Nazi, most. When she the opens, Nazi when um, on, the mother gets killed and the father gets shot, and, and then what's her name, uh, Jenny Agatair, yeah. <laughs> Logan's that's Run. First, that's when I first. Okay, two movies I realized what Conolingus was. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked about this before. One was Silver Streak. Okay, yeah, yeah. they talk about it in yeah, like, that's Flowers right. or whatever, yeah, yeah. and that one. Oh yeah, and because she just like yeah, she she, yeah. she was beautiful, God, she's and he gorgeous. was all into it. And the blood, the whole thing about what was going on in that film, the, oh, the yeah. visceral stuff. So yeah, that's but she my, opens that's my like, second Conolingus yeah. film. The dream of it when she opens the thing and it comes out. Yeah, that flipped me yeah. out. The blood yeah. in that. No, that movie. That's a that's a crazy good movie. It's so good. It's like yeah. it had everything. It was and it's funny. funny it was, yeah, and it yeah, was yeah, you. And and the thing is, is and and this is why I really like that film. Is like. You really like David. Yes. You like him. Oh no. You want you want him to make it yeah. and he doesn't. Right. Yeah. Uh, American Werewolf, there was a part they did a second one. There was okay, an American, yeah, American Were- Werewolf also mm-hmm. between that and the howling oh, pulled yes. off the effects. I oh, think yeah, American great. Werewolf was first. No. Howling actually came was, out first. It did? Yeah, cuz they Here's a crazy sure thing. That? Yeah, they both I'm I actually was reading up on these. You researched this? Yeah. <laughs> I actually saw Howling when I was probably too young to see it too, but I like that movie. I yeah. like werewolf movies. And um, Howling, American Werewolf in London, and there's another movie called The Wolfen. Yes, I remember that with, one. With um, Albert Finney. I remember that one. Came out, and The Howling comes out in like April. Wolfen comes out during the summer, and then American Werewolf in London was like an October for Halloween release. Um Howling did great because yeah. it was only like a million bucks. That's John Sales and Joe Dante, and they Dante directed. It. John Sales wrote it. Yeah, uh, D. Wallace. Mm-hmm. I yeah. loved her. Yeah, loved D. Her. Wallace. She's from ET, the mother in yeah. ET. Just Cujo. Cool. She's a mother in Cujo. Cujo as well. As well yeah. Um, yeah, she was great. She was and great. She turns movie. in that vampire. The cute. She turned a cute werewolf. Yeah, kind of like a cuddly like, little. Werewolf. Yeah, it's <laughs> like a blonde werewolf. You <laughs> Something. Know? It was a weird like a teddy diff- bear werewolf. Yeah, it was different. But there's a scene in that. And I was Joe Dante was talking about where a woman is rifling through file cabinets, mm-hmm. and the movie's got a it's got a weird edge too. It's, oh, yeah. it's a little funny. It's a little, and she gets attacked by a werewolf in that office mm-hmm. that is brutal. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's like the movie was playing with so many different. Yeah, it's know, really things going on in that it's film. So, so good. And what I liked about it too is like you, especially like if you compare. Howling and American Werewolf in London. Um, you know, the Howling, it's like they have their, it's uh, it's cool because they go into this, like they have their own little society of yeah, werewolf like people. Cult. Yeah. Uh, society, and then, yeah, that's better. And then um, in American Werewolf in London, it's truly just, 
you know, he is a he's on all fours. He's a wolf, like almost like more of a wolf than a werewolf. And man, is it like you go back and you watch it, and like those dead bodies that he att- like when he kills when he's the wolf man is just brutal. Yeah. And Griffin Dunn, uh, he he's so savage. good. Yeah, he gets he's so savage. good. All right, so let's. Uh, I'm going to talk about my thing I wanted to talk about. Sure, sure. Which is the rabbit hole I've gone down into is re. Uh, uh, watching again the Night Gallery. Oh yeah, yeah. And the Twilight Zone from the 1980s. From the 1980s. 1980s. Okay, okay. Uh, but let's talk about the the, the Night Gallery because uh-huh. that's what flipped me out as a kid. Okay, okay. so I, I I was too young for for um, the first run of the original Twilight Zone. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know Rod Serling created yeah. this thing called the Night Gallery, mm-hmm. which. It would. He'd be in a museum or a room, and it'd be a painting, and the story would be wrapped around that painting. Right. And as a kid watching those late at night, oh, yeah. they freaked. They, there were some that were so good they were freaky. They were yeah. freaky. There's one famous one with Joan Crawford, mm-hmm. directed by Steven Spielberg. Oh. Where she's a woman who a rich woman who wants to get new eyes. She has a donor give her oh, new yeah, eyes, so yeah, she's yeah. wrapped up through the whole movie. Mm-hmm. And the big reveal is once she opens, once they take the wrapping off, she's going to be able to see. But as soon as they take the wrapping off, New York City goes into a blackout. Oh. (laughs) And now she can't see, and it becomes this crazy nightmare. But the one I want to talk about is an early one called The Caterpillar. And when I tell you the premise, you're going to go, oh, I know exactly exactly what you're talking about. But this is a thing that I had known about for years. Mm-hmm. This thing that happens in the in, and I didn't know why I knew that thing until I watched this YouTuber talking about right. the best shows on the Night Gallery, and the Caterpillar was one. It starred Robert Harvey, not Robert um, Lawrence Harvey, Lawrence Harvey from yeah, the Manchurian okay. Candidate. Okay, yeah, plays this this snooty British guy. What just happened? Something turned off. Oh, that's okay. My little blue light. Snooty British guy. Mm-hmm. In this, uh, he's bored. He's in Borneo, I think, and he's bored. But mm-hmm. he's hang- he's in a house with a uh, an old British soldier and a beautiful young wife. Okay. Okay. And he's become attra- He's becoming attracted to the young wife, so he wants to sure. bump off the the, the old, old guy. guy. And there's this weird guy that he that he's friends with, who tells him, "Yes, on this island, there's these things called earwigs." Now, as soon as I say earwig, you're going to know where this is going. And what you do is you put the earwig in somebody's ear, and it. It eats their brain. It, it like they, if you right. put it in the air, it'll go through the whole brain and it'll drive the person crazy. They'll be in so much pain; they just want to kill themselves and die. You'll bump this guy off; he'll be gone. Yeah. Problem was, they put it in the wrong guy, and they put it in Lawrence Harvey. Oh man. Okay. So he knows what's going on in his brain, and he's losing his mind. He's going crazy. He's actually he's tied himself up on his bed so that he doesn't kill himself, right. and he doesn't dig in and try to scratch and go on. Somehow the earwig gets out so it's gone through his brain it uh-huh. gets out and he's okay he's gonna be okay except they find out that the earwig that went in the ear was a female and it laid eggs in his brain oh and that's how it is okay <laughs> so as a kid i didn't remember that memory until i saw them explain the caterpillar because i knew about earwigs going yeah. in the ear and eating that's why i hate those little things with the pincers yeah yeah and it reminded me how much the Night Gallery used to freak me out. Because I was, it, Night Gallery came out in 72. Mm-hmm. I was 11 years old. Oh, yeah. Watching late at night. Yeah. And it would freak the crap out of me. And there's some, there's some really, really, really good Night Galleries. As a matter of fact, I just, I just bought the whole DVD set. Oh, nice. Because I want to, and I bought the 1980s Twilight Zone as well. Okay. Because there's some interesting ones in there with actors you know now mm-hmm. who were young and fresh then bruce willis is in a couple and oh yeah, yeah yeah it's fascinating but it also it brought up this visceral feeling i had watching the night gallery because it was also dark oh yeah they they would show the they would show the painting it would be in the dark mm-hmm. and it was like kind of and you'd watch it late at night you know it's yeah. one of those things that got in my head and when i saw this earwig story i go holy shit that's where that came from i had no clue until i saw it <laughs> all along know. that's all what, along that's, that's what, what it was, was from that and had. it was buried in there that's so and the funny. other thing i brought up in the i was as a young horny probably 13 year old mm-hmm. and i was watching this movie about these beautiful women who i think were spies or something but what they would do is they would paralyzed dudes they uh-huh. would give them something to just paralyze them but they're awake they know what's going on and they're they're killing them or they're i don't know if they were 
good people or bad people. I just remember being horny about the, the women <laughs> and being freaked out that they're she's paralyzing these people. Mm-hmm. To this day, I, I hate movies where people become hypnotized uh-huh. or they lose like that thing where people get. Like, yeah. uh, have you ever seen? I don't know if you've ever seen Audition. Yeah. Okay, yeah. where the guy the guy is aware of what's going on, but he can't move. Yeah. But you can feel all the pain still. Yeah, it's the worst. It's like those things flip me out. Yeah. So that's like, I I think that's a. I won't say common fear, but that is such a terror, terrifying idea that you could just so be lying there and you perfectly, you have all of your, well, move. you can't move. Your you're completely paralyzed, but yet if somebody cuts you, you're going to feel it. Right. Well, that's what, you know, in audition, she's sticking needles everywhere. Oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So that that's what watching this night gallery um, appreciation mm-hmm. brought up a lot of things for me again. And I knew I have I have a VHS of the uh, Steven Spielberg one because it was early in his career. Yeah, yeah. When he directed Joan Crawford in that, and I just yeah. remember some of the shots that he. I I remember as a kid going, "Wow, that's an interesting." He'd right. shoot through the chandelier. Yeah. To give it a weird look, and mm-hmm. you know this who and I didn't know directors at that no, point. I don't. Yeah. Even, that was long before Jaws. Yeah. And I wasn't aware of what a director. I think that was, was even before. Duel. duel i think it was which is i think i think he got duel because of this he was on the universal lot he yeah. was he was friends with Scheinberg or whoever who ran universal who who was the the husband of aaron uh, gray who was the mother in jaws oh yeah 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 i mean she was great i'm not saying she got it because she wasn't great but sure um so yeah he was around and he did a he did yeah. an early night gallery and that's awesome man yeah it's kind of you kind of forget forget about that but like it's like I always like I love to bring up Duel with people. I it's, to this day, man, I I love that movie. Yeah. I think it's and it's it was a main. What well, it's kind of funny. I mean, I'm sh- I guess maybe they do or, or now with streaming, it's all kind of different. But like they used to really make truly make made for TV movies. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. You know um, now it's like Tuesday night. Tuesday yeah. night was a big. And I mean, night. I guess they always. I guess they still technically do. Um, speaking of which, Mad Magazine used to do this spoof. Mm. And there's a song I sang as a kid called Movies Tuesday Night because <laughs> ABC or one of them would do right. Tuesday Night The movies. Tuesday Night yeah. Movies. Wow. That's where I saw uh, Roots. No, I'm trying to think of the movies that would... Uh, okay, 72 also The Exorcist came out. Mm. And my friend Dave Malcolmson says to me, I didn't make... I threw up in the middle of the movie and I was like, oh, I can't go see that. Though. This kid puked. Probably during the pee puking uh, scene. Yeah. Um, so you know, uh, I wasn't a brave kid. I didn't go. I didn't go see a lot of weird stuff. But I would watch yeah. stuff on TV that would flip the. Flip yeah, I was not a big horror guy. Like as a kid, and I'm still not even to this day like a big horror guy. And I've never, I've never really had the stomach for like, like like hardcore cruelty. You know, yeah, like, like just the hostile the, movies and stuff. Yeah, like, like the that. cutting They're on people. Porn. I can't. Yeah, it's, it's, I can't it's stomach that. That's why, like, I've always gravitated toward. Um, and even something like the thing, which is really brutal, it's, it's space it's aliens. Yeah, but it's still, you know? it's like same with aliens. Yeah, and 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 yeah, there's more. No, I don't humans know. Humans do stuff to humans. That's yeah. a different. Like Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, which is yeah. practically a documentary. I know, right? It's crazy. Um, what was I? I was also going to mention. Um, oh, I forget. Oh, what was I just going to say? It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, no. It's, uh, that's, those are, you know, it's, yeah. I mean, and plus, you know, you see those things when you're a kid, you know, like I said, I had an older brother, so I ended up seeing a lot of things that probably shouldn't have yeah, seen. Yeah, I didn't, I was the oldest, so I, I wasn't blazing any trails yeah. for anybody. Uh, the earwig thing stuck with me. Mm, that's gross. Yeah. Um, mine was I'm the big, sure. I was a big fan of the, the Twilight Zone. I remember. The Once, original, the original, but again, yeah. you didn't see first run, obviously. So no, no, it was. I remember specifically one of those UHF stations. This is all before cable, obviously, um, or at least before we had cable. Yeah. Um, this UHF station used to show like the Twilight Zone, and at like eleven o'clock. And I remember, like on Friday nights, if I was sleeping over at my friend's house, he loved that kind of crazy stuff, and so we would watch the Twilight Zone. I think it was followed by the Outer Limits. Outer Limits yeah. freaked me out a little bit. Yeah. A little more than... Night because Gallery definitely, Night definitely da- did it to me. I feel like Night Gallery definitely had more of a horror vibe it to went, it. Yeah, it went, it went a little stronger in You that. know, and because like... The and Twilight- once Rod Serling started not writing all mm-hmm. of them, it got 
Yeah. It, it got more horror. It got more monsterish. Yeah. You know, because I mean, I think that like the Twilight Zone, weird, creepy, always with a good hook. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, like I, I you just expected re- it. Yeah, but you were you were kind of expecting to be surprised, but yeah. I was always surprised. Yeah. Even that terror at thirty thousand feet or whatever, the one with good Shatner. Man. The one I remember that I really the Twilight Zone is the guy, the soldier who could tell who was gonna die. Oh, I by a shine know. that they had, like his oh. his his the people he was fighting with. Mm. He'd see the shine. Then he looks in a mirror and he sees the shine on himself. himself. Oh, wow. And it's like oh, you know. Yeah. So uh, oh, I, I know what I was going to say. The other show that freaked me out as a kid, it's ridiculous, I know, was Unsolved Mysteries with Robert Stack. <laughs> there was something about the fact that he'd be talking about killers and serial killers and bad people, and you're watching late at night, and you're a little kid, yeah. and they're not solved, which means they could, weren't caught. Could still be out there. <laughs> that one freaked me out, too. Yeah, that one's... But that's not horror. You know, the no, horror last, stuff yeah. is... Um, but yeah, so so... I'm just trying to uh, 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 Stephen King. I will say this: the one one that I I I, I want to catch up with sooner rather than later is they have made a third version of Salem's Lot. It's on HBO Max right now. I just yeah. What's the second version? There was a uh, miniseries. There was the miniseries that Toby Hooper directed, right. like in '78, right. with David Solon yep. and um, James Mason. Yeah, and then in like 2003 or four, so about 20 years ago, TBS did another miniseries with Rob Lowe and Andre oh, Brower. Oh, I remember that. I do remember that. And same thing, same you know, same basic thing, like a two-night miniseries. Yeah. Um, this new movie. It's a movie. It's not a series. It's a movie. It's yeah. like a single movie, yeah. which is funny because I will say this. I actually ended up re-watching the original Salem's Lot, the Toby Hooper one. Um, David and- Soul. Yeah, and it's about three hours long. Bonnie Bedelia's in it too. Yep. A very young Bonnie Bedelia, yep. who we all know from Die Hard. But right. um, uh, sorry, I got a, I got a little. I lost my train of thought with Bonnie Bedelia. Um, but no, that movie. I I could see how that might actually be better as a two hour film than a three hour miniseries. You know what I mean? I feel like there was oh, a I think lot the of time. Was padded out, especially yeah. the love story between David Soul and Bonnie yeah. Bedelia. I mean, again, I was watching a comparing mm-hmm. the two. And obviously, they do a lot more effect work in the in the in the new one. Yeah, yeah. crosses that are glow like mm-hmm. like lightsabers. You know. Oh, is that yeah in the new yeah. one? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Like with Maria, uh, uh, not Nosfer- Nosferatu. Nosferatu, yeah, is coming out in December. Christmas Day is when really? that's premiering. Yes, which doesn't make sense. I don't know why it's not out now. Yeah, that, that looks sense. amazing. The same guy who directed The Witch. Oh, oh, Eggers, oh, cool. I think yeah, yeah, Robert yeah, David, yeah. Da- Robert, David, David, Eggers uh, is right, Eggers, yeah. um, and he, and William Defoe and the guy, It, is playing the, oh, Dracula. really, yeah. really, yeah. okay, and it looks pretty decent, it looks freaky, because I was, and yeah, erotic, and all kinds of stuff going on, because there's a really good, um, it's not, well, it's kind of about Nosferatu, it's called Shadow of the Vampire. That's what William Defoe, right? Play he plays Max Shrek, right? He he plays Max Shrek as if Max Shrek were actually really a vampire. Yeah. And um, what do you call it? Uh, oh gosh, um, John Malkovich plays F. W. Murnau, right? <laughs> the, the director, right. you know. And and it's like people on this on the staff keep getting killed because Shrek's really he's really Nosferatu, right. you know. Right. Um, I will say this: I did I did watch um a return to salem's lot because it's also on hbo it, it's uh it's god awful don't even it's don't even waste your time it was one of those ones where it is like i think it was actually a movie that came out in the theater and i looked it up and it said the budget was 12 million dollars yeah and i think 10 of that 12 must have gone to stephen king for him to allow them to use his name and char- michael moriarty <laughs> well, I've never been all that. Th- oh, I love him. Oh, well, you I do? love him in Law and Order. I was about to say you ever that see seems Y or Q. You ever see Q? The Winged Serpent. Yeah, he's in that too. <laughs> I think it's the same guy that directed Q, The Winged Serpent. It might be because it's funny because he has had Moriarty in a bunch of his films. Yeah, like for whatever reason. But it was just, it was just, it was like it's weird. There's like a kernel of a good idea in the middle about like this vampire society in, in Salem's lot that has taken over. But then um, 
Like it's just so right, poorly two, executed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna name two brutal vampire films that mm. just near dark. Oh God, so and good. Thirty Days of Night. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see that? Yeah, one? saw both. I mean, near dark. Just, is fantastic. I mean, and the, the other one, Let Me In, Let the Right One In, is great. I've actually film. never sat down and watched that one. You gotta watch this. Watch the original first, right? And then check this. Well, but that the, one's good. The, the but the thing I, I heard about Let the Right One In, and this is why I probably didn't jump on it when it was really hot, like when people were talking about it. I heard that there was actually two subtitle tracks or two. There was two versions of the subtitle and they were like the first one that came out was awful. Right. It was like a terrible translation Absolutely, and it like yeah. would, didn't do the movie justice. But if you saw it with like the better redone subtitles. I, have no idea. All I know is I loved it. I well, loved then the you probably saw the good one. And I liked the second one. Yeah. Cool. Which is uh, Chloe. But I've and actually and never sat down and watched it. Yeah, it's pretty good. I've heard. I've heard it's really good. Um, all right. So anything else <clears throat> that scared you as a child? Jesus. Um, Other than carnies? Carnies. Carnies. <laughs> Small hands. <laughs> smell like cabbage. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. No, I mean, there's, there's definitely, I'd have to sit down and think about it a little bit. But like, yeah, there was definitely like, um, you know, just any kind of, I, I was always more afraid of things like I, I thought that when I when I finally got around to seeing the original Halloween, once again, going back to John Carpenter, that was really creepy. Um, one of the things I find so disturbing about that film is that so much of the movie takes place in the broad daylight. Like he's just walking around on Halloween. Yeah. He's in between the sheets. He's at the end of the hedgerow. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, like it's such. It's so mundane, yeah. and it so looks like that's what this. That's this where thing, I grew up. Right here is him yeah, the shrubs. Like exactly, that. and that's the bucks. funny. The funny thing is, is like that was a good one. Anything that had that real air of everydayness to it always freaked me out. Well, did you ever see Midsummer? No, I haven't that's, seen that. I've heard that it. takes place in bright sunlight because it's there's no dark, there's no night. Yeah. When they go to Sweden or wherever oh, they go. Oh, yeah. It's no like night. land of the midnight. So, and it's yeah. all this shit is happening in the middle of the day. And oh, my it's gosh. Just, it's yeah, horrible. I've heard it's horrible. I've heard it's, it's terrifying. Great. No, it's great. It's 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 really good, but it's like, wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of, I didn't I didn't seek out horror films as a kid. Yeah, I mean, Like, either. I kind of like, I never, I don't know, I just never really sought them out. I mean, sometimes I like them, you know, obviously yeah. certain ones I've, I've gravitated toward. But, like, I didn't see, like... I remember there was one out called Bad Dreams, you know, yeah. so I was, and it looked like one of those really bloody horror films. Yeah, Shudder's doing a series right now on the tropes, all mm -hmm. kinds of all this, and, and, and they're showing tons and tons and tons of clips from all kinds of horror movies. Really good. And, you know, they hit all the tropes, you know, the final girl, yeah. African-American who dies first, yeah. uh, all this stuff. It's, it's pretty schlick, so anyway. Cool. All right, well, so... Uh, no other fears. Halloween. Maybe we do another one of these. Oh, I don't yeah. know. We'll see. We got we got a couple more weeks to Halloween because we're looking at what's today the eighth, October eighth. Uh yeah. So if yeah, we have another we're... idea of something else we want to talk oh, about, yeah, maybe man, I, you know. I mean, there's a little part of me that's. I mean, it would be kind of out of context for us because it's not technically a theater film, but we could look at the new Salem's Lot. I mean, I. I don't know if that's your bag or not. I mean, I'd watch it if we're going to talk about it, but yeah. then we'd have to watch both. That's the problem. I'd have to watch the. You'd have to go back again. and watch the miniseries. Okay, I understand. Or that. well, the other thing we could do, go back to our old uh, Indian Cinemaniac roots. Do you remember any of those that we watched? Do you remember Thumbad? Thumbad was one that was really scary. I that was a freaky, <laughs> freaky film, man. I mean, I wouldn't mind talking about that one again because could do that, yeah. I really loved that film. And we have a film club at work now. Oh, okay, cool. And I put that in my list of uh -huh. ones that I want people to see. Sure. I don't think it got picked. But yeah. um, that one was, that's is a horror film, mm -hmm. pretty, pretty freaking good. No, that's not I, really a, I guess it is a horror film. It is it, definitely yeah, a horror film. Yeah. I mean, that. I feel like that one is like horror film from the get Yeah, but let's, let's, uh, we'll powwow, we'll figure out. Yeah. We got a couple weeks before th uh, Halloween. Halloween. Might as well do another one yeah. of these. Uh, it allow us to drink something. Maria will have to make another concoction. Something else, man. She's not like I try to get her to. She had no. She had older brothers. Mm. She goes, I never really got freaked out by movies when I was a kid. I'm like, okay. All and right. she watches all these serial killer this and. <laughs> yeah, she knows her serial killer. <laughs> So, um, but maybe I maybe we can uh, have her join. But in, in any case, let's figure out another. Mm. 
Yeah. And you know, we'll do another one and uh, we'll, you know, do another Cinematic Lounge Halloween edition. That's a good idea. I'll I keep mean, this all up here so I don't have to move it. So you don't have to take it down? It's, it's spot on the nose. I mean, Halloween. <laughs> oh, that's great. I mean, what else? Hey, what? Uh, Halloween. What else? Yeah. What else? <laughs> well, you know, it's it's uh, it's funny. I, I will say this. I didn't see it till I was much older, but obviously the extra. Well, I shouldn't say much older. I was in high school when I saw The Exorcist. And being raised not Catholic, Catholic but, but Christian, Christian yeah. you know, movies like that would freak me out too. That's a. I was watching that. One oh, night. that. Oh, one night geez, I was I, watching that movie I'm on sorry. DVD. Uh huh. And literally at midnight, my clock fell off the wall. I I am not lying. I and I'm not one who, but it freaked me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was that one was weird. Yeah, that was weird. Have you ever seen Exorcist three? Uh, George C. Scott? Y- no. Oh, I think I just found our new film. Okay. I think I just found our I new film. I've seen Exorcist 2, The Heretic. No, no. <laughs> that's the. Uh, John that, Borman's. That's not good. Not finest that's work. Not but. good. But 3 was directed by William Peter Blatty, who wrote The Exorcist. He directed it? Yes. Really? And it has one of the greatest freak out scenes that takes forever. Ever. I'm not even going to tell. I don't want to okay. tell you. I, that's what. That's what we're going to do. Okay. You're going to watch 3. Exorcist three. Sounds and good. And we're going to talk about that one. I can do that because it is. I, I there's a specific scene I want to talk to you about. And uh, and you're from you're from here. You're from and uh, you're yeah. from Maryland. Blatty, I think, lived in Georgetown. There's a yeah. lot of uh, Washington centric stuff that obviously because yeah. Exorcist took the place Exorcist in Georgetown. Steps are still but there. This one specifically. Calls out people and uh-huh. things in DC that nice. you would really recognize. Cool. Obviously, cool, cool. we have the stairway the that steps, everybody yeah. that comes in, we take them to. But yeah, yeah Exorcist Three. That's your homework. Here's okay? here. Here's one that just Deal? popped in. Yes, okay. I'm on Exorcist Good. Three. I'll take care of it. But I will say this: the one thing that just popped into my head, a classic, and this is one that I always recommended to people because nobody had seen for whatever reason when I was working at Blockbuster in the '90s, nobody had seen The Omen. The first Omen. The first one. The original Omen. Was that directed by Richard Donner? I believe it was with yeah. Gregory Peck yeah. and Lee Remick. No, that's, that's yeah. uh, what's his name? Gets his head sliced off by oh, the glass. Oh, gosh. David, David Warner. Warner. Yeah. The glass takes That his- movie. That's a freak out movie. That's a freak out yeah. film. And I remember that was one where like, you know, I'd always get these like teenagers going, oh, is there a good horror movie? And I was like, have you guys seen The Omen? Because like they had a lot of you know people who are into it, they had seen The Exorcist, they had seen yeah. a lot of these old like seventies horror movies, and I'd be like, "Have you seen The Omen?" Yeah, and almost none of them had, and I would be like, "It's freaky." Yeah, and I just kind of leave it at that. It's you know, a good one. it's it's you know it's not like not, and I would be like, "It's not a nonstop body count kind of thing," but it is a freaky. No, that movie. started the. That's kind of the final destination. Like you're waiting for whatever the next kills yeah. going to be. Yeah, that's all the Rube Goldberg kind of kills. Yes, like there were things, some really yeah. like things. Just that one priest that gets the, the yeah the spear, spire the spire yeah David Warner obviously getting his head yeah lopped off because he was taking the photo. Something but, happens in an elevator, I think maybe, or is that two? There's I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. I just know that that's the one where he starts taking the photos and he sees all oh, right the bodies like they 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 show up as like dark spots and yeah. then he he's like I caught my own reflection and it showed like this exactly like that's, thing across that's his that's neck a good one. that's a good call yeah gosh that's a good one yeah the all right good. but your homework is Exorcist three oh I'm on it man okay I'm on I it. Can't Exorcist wait. three George C Scott you, I I don't want I don't want to give it away all you, right do man, you have I'll, it do I need to give it to you I have it I'll give it to you on if Twitter. you've got it I'll I got take it because I, I don't know it. if I mean I would imagine it's got to be streaming somewhere it is but I have it I'll dig up the Blu-ray I'll give it to you if you got it I'll take it that way I don't even have to all right well welcome back to the lounge again happy Halloween another Halloween edition. You know it, man. We'll do more. Let's go.